On today's Monday episode of the Locked On Texans podcast, which position group are you most excited to see? Cody and I talk about that. And will the AFC South be the toughest division in the NFL? Hmm. You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to a Monday episode of the Locked On Texans podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your Texans football analyst, John Some Sports Guy Hickman. On the other side of the screen, Texans credential media member, Sports Illustrated, its own, the man that's always working, Cody M. Davis. If this is your first time watching or listening to the Locked On Texans podcast, First and foremost, thank you for stopping by, tuning in. You could be anywhere in the world. Please subscribe, like, and comment to the Locked On Texans podcast on Twitter, I mean, on you on, on YouTube, and wherever you listen to your podcast. And please give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On Texans and follow me on Twitter at John underscore Hickman 12 for Cody, Cody Davis underscore 24. Uh, we opened up today's show. Well, we were talking about on today's show, excuse me, Cal McNair. Uh, possibly uh, being the principal owner for the Houston of the Houston Texans. We'll close out with that. Which position group are you most excited to see? I think that's going to be very fun, right? I, I think we can go either way in terms of whatever side of the ball that we're looking at. We do open up today's episode with the discussion centered around the topic the AFC South right now is loading up, guys. Will they be the toughest division in the NFL? However, I do want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. $200 bucks in your pocket if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. We've seen upgrades and big signings for the Jacksonville Jaguars. We've seen it for the Tennessee Titans, who I really believe may be the Houston Texans uh, kryptonite. Hmm. But it's, it's always been tough between Houston and Tennessee. Of course, we know that the Houston Texans have made upgrades. Uh, but the AFC right now, you look at a division with three – Second-year quarterback is going into this season, right? Sophomore C.J. Uh, uh, Will Levis, Anthony Richardson. You look at a fourth-year quarterback in Trevor Lawrence. This is a, a division that I think has some, you know, interesting quarterbacks to say the least, and it's kind of turning out to be possibly one of the toughest divisions in the NFL. Yeah, and this topic came by due to the Tennessee Titans landing Legereus Sneed in the trade Friday night. And, John, I got to thinking, man, look, a lot of people have been talking down on the AFC South for an extremely long time. Um, matter of fact, you could just look at the last two decades, you know, for the longest, this is a the division that was dominated by the Indianapolis Colts during the Peyton Manning years, you know. Then, you know, let's say the latter half of, like, the last 10 years, you know, the Houston Texans and the Tennessee Tennessee Titans basically took turns being at the top of this division. And then towards the last couple of years, you know, it seemed like ever since the arrival of Trevor Lawrence, the Jacksonville Jaguars were supposed to be the next team to run away with this division. But of course, as we know, they literally just had one season of being the top dog in this division. As we know, going into the 2024 campaign, your Houston Texans are the reigning divisional champions. But John, I, I, I do believe that this might be one of, if not the toughest, most competitive division in the NFL because look we know what to expect from the Houston Texans we know what to expect from the Jacksonville Jaguars and when I was looking at both of these teams at the end of last season I thought to myself look these are going to be the top two teams in the league I thought the Indianapolis Colts was going to hover around mediocrity and I thought without a shadow of a doubt that the Tennessee Titans were definitely going to go into a rebuild however the moves that they made Tennessee and not only landing one of the top cornerbacks in the league, but they also shocked everybody inside Kelvin Ridley, improving their wide receiving core for their second year quarterback. Man, I'm I'm just looking at it like as right now, 
I don't know if the season was to start tomorrow. I don't know which team in this division would be favorites to take home divisional titles, to take home the divisional title for this upcoming season. Plus, by the way, you take a look at Jacksonville, you're talking about a team that's, that literally improved their defense, gave Trevor Lawrence even more weapons to utilize on the offensive side of the ball, man. I'm not going to lie, man. I truly believe that the AFC South is not going to be a cakewalk for not just the team within the division, but for the opponents as well. Man, when you look at the Tennessee th- what they've been able to accomplish during free agency, you can say that they probably won. Uh, I, I really want to talk to our guy Tyler Rowland from the Locked On Titans, but mm-hmm. Tony Pollard at running back. So now it's Pollard and uh, Spears, who was a rookie last year. Calvin really was probably their big free agent splash signing up until they went out and got and traded for Sneed. Got Cushion Berry at center. Right, so now you're looking at an offensive line that's getting an upgrade, and that was a huge upgrade that they needed. Right, that mm-hmm. offensive line last year was not the greatest in the NFL. So, uh, I, I look at the Titans. We can we can we can talk crazy about the Jags all we want. I'm not counting them out yet. Right, I, it has to be because Houston split with them last year. Unlike the mm-hmm. Tennessee Titans, where they you know two and zero Titans, um, the Jags will always be a, a tough. You know, game for the for the Houston Texans, and then I look at the Colts. The Colts, as of right now, nothing scares me about them. But it, you know, I do think about they are getting Anthony Richardson back, and he will be undoubtedly their QB one because Gardner Minshew has left in free agency to go elsewhere. So I think this is going to be an interesting division to say the least. You got four coaches in uh, this division. You got you got D'Amico down here in Houston. Right, you got guys that's in this division that are looking to build off of what they expect of a team, and I think that everybody has taken that step forward. And again, I am anticipating when we'll get an opportunity to see Anthony Richardson play 17 games. Hopefully, mm-hmm. it's this year and for the rest of his career. We definitely want to see that young man have a shot to be as great as he can without injury biting him. But this could be one of the leagues. Most surprising divisions, toughest. I still got to go with the AFC North, Pittsburgh, so. Ravens, Baltimore, right? Uh, mm. um, the, the Bengals, uh, the Browns, <laughs> the, Brown, the Browns, who have done a very good job in free agency loading up that roster, and they got guys that's already on, 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 on you know, on contract coming back. So I believe that right now that is probably the toughest division in the NFL. And mm-hmm. traditionally, it normally is when you look at the top dogs being the Steelers and the Ravens, they are always kind of clawing at each other. But I think for the AFC South, I can see the possibility of how it went down last year kind of going down the same way this year, fighting and clawing the last three weeks of the season up until the last the Titans could have made it up until like the last three or four weeks. The Colts could have won it, the Jags had a shot, and Houston was just. We're on the way. We're on the way. We're on the way. Right. So either they won the division or had an opportunity to make the wild card uh, for the AFC South. I can see that possibility. It is some inexperience in this division that can that's taking it away from being the toughest. Hmm. Sophomore quarterback in Houston, sophomore quarterback in Tennessee, sophomore quarterback in Indy, but has only played in three games. It was three games, for, two games for Anthony Richardson, right? Mm-hmm. Well, two, two full. Well, was it two? Games? I don't know. He, he he didn't play more than five. Put it like that. <laughs> yeah, it was it was you know not a lot of games, not a lot of snaps, not a lot of experience gained last year. And I look at the Jacksonville Jaguars as a team that desperately will be looking to bounce back and prove themselves. Right, the way that their season ended last year was unacceptable, and now the talking point. Uh, around the league nationally and locally is is Trevor Lawrence the one or not? Hmm. So they're going to be looking to prove something, no doubt about it. Uh, this really? division will be scrappy. I will say that. I think it's going to be very scrappy. And I think inexperience will either lead to bad outcomes or we're going to see some of these quarterbacks do a very good job of adjusting on the fly. I want to see what Will Levis does now that he got – Hop, Burks, and Ridley. 
Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks in your pocket to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on some college hoops until they cut down the net. Go UH Cougs. Welcome back, Locked On Texans listeners and viewers to this Monday episode of the Locked On Texans podcast. As of right now, Cody and I, I think everybody is still waiting on a couple of things. Upgrading at the safety position. And I can see with the first pick in the 2024 NFL draft, I can see Houston doing that, going that route. Upgrading the wide receiver position. I can see Houston going that route with the first pick that they have at 42 in the 2024 NFL draft. But we can't sit here in front and say, well, they haven't made upgrades, right? We know that they've made those upgrades. And Cody, my question to you, listeners and viewers, you you guys as well, if you're watching on YouTube, drop it in the comment section. Which position group are you most excited to see? I got two. Um, the first one has uh nothing to do with any upgrades. The one I'm most excited to see as of right now is the safety unit. Plain and simple. And I say that because, look, the one thing that a lot of us, me, you, um, Big Sarge, B. Scott, Jonathan, and DJ, the one thing I love that all of us do is while we are covering and getting to know these young players, we always say the same thing. Give them three years, and then we're going to get an idea of what this player is going to be like in their career. And the one guy that I'm looking at is Jalen Petrie. We talked about it a lot. This young man had a very disappointing season in 2023. We all know the story. He got benched on Christmas Eve. And I think probably outside of one, maybe two plays, uh, he did not show up at all in 2023. However, John, I do believe that part of the reason why I feel like Nick Casario and Coach D'Amico Ryan haven't addressed the safety unit in free agency as of right now is simply due to the fact that they still believe in that young man. And I keep going back to Coach D'Amico Ryan's introductory press conferences over press conference over a year ago, where he sat there and made sure that he highlighted Jalen Petrie on two separate occasions. And I get it, I understand it. There wasn't a lot of players that you're going to highlight by taking over that version of the Houston Texans. I think outside of Petrie, I think the only other player that he highlighted was Derek Stingley Jr. So you're looking at two guys without a shadow of a doubt in Coach D'Amico Ryan's mind. They were a foundational piece for the Houston Texans moving forward. The one thing about Jalen Petrie that also keeps me, keeps me believing in that young man is the fact that, look, this is a man that's still trying to find his niche in the NFL, and he came in his second season where he got to get adjusted to a whole new scheme and a whole new system. And I know we was all excited about Coach D'Amico Ryan's coming in, but you got to um, keep in mind the reality of the point is this is still a young man still trying to find his way in the league. And I think going into his second year with the same defensive coordinator, with the same head coach, with the same defensive scheme, I think that young man is definitely going to improve that safety unit. Another unit I'm excited about looking at is the cornerback unit because the one thing that I always go back to at the NFL Combine, both Nick Casario and Coach D'Amico Ryan say that they wanted to pair Derrick Stingley Jr. with another solid, another good lockdown corner. And I do believe that they're going to have an opportunity to do that with Jeff Okuda. You know what? I got two position groups as well, but they both come in the trenches. Mm. Houston did a very good job of, you know, getting additions to that D line and also upgrading. We all can agree that Daniel Hunter, as much as we like JG 52 here on the show and around the city, Daniel Hunter is just, you know, a much talented, better player. Uh, Autry, right? I, I'm also interested in the rotational guys, right? Settle, Patrick Cowsey. They brought back Khalil Davis. Uh, Big Kurt still on this roster, right? They did a they did a they did a good job of building depth mm -hmm. to the point where, you know, before the draft, I thought Houston was definitely going to be taking a, a you know look at D tackle with the first two picks. I'm not so sure right now. Mm. Uh, I think Houston, will, it would make sense for Houston to maybe get Mason Smith late in the draft. Uh, but as of right now, I think that group is not only deep, but it's talented 
and it's very pick your poison esque. We can we can do some things with Will Anderson and and, and Hunter on the on the inside and Altry out there at the same time. And then that third D, D tackle position, we got some guys that can come in and just feast because they're going to do their job and things are just going to flow their way. So I'm excited to see about the D tackle position, but on the offensive side of the ball. If this offensive line stays healthy mm. and we are able to see a jump in King and Green and we're able to see a foundation and consistency at the center position, right, with Titus Howard getting back to playing right tackle, right, leave that guard <laughs> alone. We don't even want to think about you in that spot no more. And with Larry Tunsil – cleaning up that knee and, and him just getting healthier as he's getting older in age, right? And Shaq Mason just, you know, being a solid piece to the offensive line. We may – I have an opportunity to see what we wanted to see last year. Remember the talk of the mm-hmm. training camp was top five, top five, top five, top five. I remember five. that. The Texans could possibly have a top five offensive line unit. And the moment we spoke it, injury, 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 mm. injury. So now for me, guys, it's all about just seeing this, this team healthy and specifically that offensive line healthy. I might not even, I might not even talk about the offensive line during training camp. <laughs> I'm not going to put no juju on them. You know, in basketball games where they say, well, he hasn't missed a free throw and however many attempts. Yeah. In the moment that they say it, miss free throw. Or, <laughs> or when they say in basketball, this team don't have no chance to go to the play in tournament. Next thing you know, eight wins in a row. <laughs> in a row. Shout out to JG4, Jalen Green. But I'm not going to put no juju on them because I really believe in my heart of hearts, based off what we had an opportunity to see last year from a group that was mixed with vets and inexperience, talent, and, and, and not as much talent. Like the group from last year was not an even group. Mm-hmm. So now that you got an opportunity for Kenyon Green to get a full offseason for some of the rookies from last year, they're going to go through a whole NFL offseason program after getting the experience that they needed for last year. Vets getting healthier. I can see a situation where the Texans cut down on their sack numbers. We see a better running team because, you know, at in its core, this is what this offense wants. A team that's able to run the ball still effectively, we'll see a much better offense because of the healthiness from the offensive line. So I'm excited to see both sides of the ball in terms of the line play because I believe that if the D line is impactful and is you know tenacious and is as effective that I believe that they will, then I believe the linebackers are going to eat. All right, you're going to see those guys be able to flow in and out, play their role, play their position, get to where they need to be. We know that right now. Al Shahir and Christian Harris both have the ability to be impactful sideline to sideline and north and south. So we're going to see them be able to be just kind of free-flowing guys out there. You got two safeties playing linebacker, basically, and especially if that D-line is playing as impactful as they can be as we want them to play. And then I look at the cornerback position in the secondary overall, and I think to myself, if they're causing that much pressure that we believe that they're caused on the offense, on a quarterback – just be ready. Have your hands ready for some Oskies, some pick sixes. Some of them turnovers are going to fall right in your lap. You don't even got to work for it. And for the O-line, give Joe Mix what he need. The best offensive line he's ever played behind. And watch how easier that makes C.J. Jobs, uh, C.J. Stroud's job be on that field. As you know, Locked On has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel, Locked On Sports Today. Baseball fans, mark your calendar. It already started March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern time for the best MLB season preview coming exclusively to the Locked On Sports Today. On March 20th, when we kicked it off, uh, they got all of the insight from the MLB local experts of the Locked On podcast channels and network. Find it again on YouTube. 24-7 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or free Amazon TV Fire Channels app. Before we close out today's episode, Cal McNair uh, mm-hmm. will be voted on in a couple of days on whether or not he will be the principal owner. Yes, sir. And that's going to come during the NFL's owner's 
meeting that's taking place right now in Orlando. And, you know, I'm pretty sure that they're going to pass this because, look, as we all know, ever since um, Bob McNair passed away, I believe it was in 2015, 2016, um, Janice McNair was the primary owner being involved in everything along with Kyle McNair. But over the last couple of years, we have definitely seen Kyle McNair um, step up and be this team principal owner, the primary owner that's going out and making sure they take care of all of the businesses and stuff. So, you know, the NFL is going to vote whether or not Cal is going to get the get the primary states. Like I said, John, I'm pretty sure they're going to pass this with ease because, look, I understand at one time a lot of people was making fun of Cal. <laughs> you know, a lot of people was questioning, you know, what's going on? We're not about to go through Tommy the whole boy. story. Tommy boy, remember that nickname? But look, over the last two seasons, man, over the last two, two years, um, Cal McNair and his wife, Hannah McNair, has done a phenomenal job in revamping his franchise, and they are they have played a very significant role in, in the reason why we have seen not only success, but stability, hype, and, and excitement, and everything else, New Jersey's, everything else with this organization over the last, let's say, 12 to 15 months. So shout out to Cal McNair, man. I'm pretty sure that they're going to vote it with ease, and it's going to be exciting to see what, what the Houston, what the future has in store for the Houston Texans. Thank you guys for listening to this episode of the Locked On Texans podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, and comment on YouTube. Uh, also, follow on Twitter at Locked On Texans. Give me a follow on Twitter at John underscore Hickman, Hickman 12. Excuse me. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody C O T Y D A V I S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.